Hello, and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. Today, you're going to be hanging out with Austin and I, and we're going to dig into the transformation of the individuals who Austin has worked with over his career of working with individuals online and in person. Over the last eight years, he's worked with a plethora of different individuals, as well as the uh, different types of results and and goals that he's accomplished. It's going to be really fun to show you guys that and, and see kind of his progression over time. So, Austin. Great to have you on your own podcast. This is the first intro I've had, so it's going to be a little sloppy. <laughs> oh, dude, it's harder than you think, right? Yeah. Like opening up shows, you're just like, oh, this is pretty simple. And then <laughs> you realize like halfway through your opening monologue that you actually have an ending to that monologue. <laughs> you don't actually know where you're going with it. Uh, it's a, sometimes people get on me on YouTube in the comments when they're like, oh, you're just reading. <laughs> and it's like, sometimes I am because... If you've ever done this and you have other things going on in your life, like it gets hard sometimes, like you don't quite know what to say or you start saying something and you're like, no, I got it. And then halfway through, you're like, wait, are we recording? Yeah. Um, So, yeah, man, uh, thank you for welcoming me to the (laughs) to the show. I I guess, you know, we could take a piece from uh, Stronger by Science here as like a temporary guest co-host. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I guess I could take that position that Greg takes in that show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you guys listen to the episode prior to this, I dug into with Sue of my kind of progression within uh, clients and the pivots that I've taken and those different factors. And so we started that episode and I'd like to start today's episode with this as well, where um, who did you really start to work with when we started physique developments and um, who were you really wanting to work with in that time frame as well? I think anyone that would pay us. Um, <laughs> I think that's a great, like, I, that, that's honestly the, the truth. Um, you know, back in, I guess this would have been late, late 2014, early 2015. Um, ultimately, you know, it's just Alex and I training at different gyms across the city and, kind of creating a little, you know, obviously we started a YouTube channel as well. And that's kind of what sparked all of this to happen. But, you know, I think at that time we kind of had people starting to kind of follow what we were doing, which was great because we were, that's kind of what we wanted out of it in a way we were just having so much fun and enjoying (laughs) ourselves and, and learning about ourselves and training and stuff. And we ultimately just wanted people to eventually, because we saw other people doing online stuff you know, and training stuff, obviously. And I'd start, I'd had some in-person clients before then and at that time and whatever else. And, um, but we, we had some, some people we looked up to and and followed online that were like doing this online training thing. And, and so I think at that time we, we sort of were just like, oh, I think we could do that too. Um, not in like a way of like, oh, if they can do it, we can do it. But it was like, I think we have the knowledge, you know, we were in school for it. You know, we, we had had tons of experience you know, ton, tons, we had had experience in it, you know, up to that point and, and had gotten good results. And, you know, you get to that point where people just, you're in the gym training at almost every session. Someone's like, Hey man, uh, you know, I've noticed you guys are in here doing X, Y, and Z. Like, could you help me out? Or what's your advice on this? And I think it's kind of how it starts for a lot of people is people just at your local gym or at the gyms you train at start to ask you some questions. And ultimately you're just like, yeah, you know, you give out all this free advice for so long that eventually you're like, could, could one of you guys like just start to pay me something so yeah. I could maybe quit the job I don't like, you know, yeah. <laughs> like do this full time. <laughs> that would be so cool. Um, and so I remember kind of, I guess, f- fully answer the question. Like, I remember we put out like our first like infographic sort of like, hey, we're taking on clients, you know, and I, I remember uh, I think it was Kevin, Kevin Kadurovic. Um, I still don't know how to say, like, I think we're, he was a client of mine for like four years and I, I not sure that's how you pronounce his last name, but, um, you know, I think within like 30 minutes he was like, Hey man, I'm interested. And it was like, here we go, dude, this is, (laughs) this is what's going on. This is what we're about to do. Um, you know, and, and those were the floodgates. I think I had two or three people interested um, which kind of sparked everything, you know, and th- th- those were people just kind of like us who were looking to build some muscle and stuff. And, you know, we were into competing. So I started to get in to can helping people compete, you know, uh, after I, ha- I had had some success in competing. I, I was really nervous. I'll be honest, man, like some success, like 
Um, a little tiny bit of success <laughs> in competing. And I was really nervous, honestly, because, <clears throat> you know, I'm someone who I, I don't always love this, but I'm, I'm someone who cares what other people think thinks a lot of the time. Um, and not like outwardly, but very inwardly. Like I internalize a lot of that and I'm just like, it makes me nervous to do certain things. I'm, I'm working on that, um, have been for a while, uh, but <laughs> it's fine. That never goes away. Coach is listening to this. Um, if that's you, just keep working on it. Uh, but when, so during that time, I was really nervous because like we, there was this narrative online of like, oh, competes once becomes a coach to help competitors, you know? And it's like, I don't want to be that. Like, I don't want to be a meme. I don't want to be the butt end of that joke. And so I went to the extreme and I turned pro before I took on any clients <laughs> within competing. And I was like, look, if I'm able to turn pro and do this thing, like, then I'll feel confident. And it actually happened. And I was like, all right, well, I got to keep that promise. And that's kind of when I, I guess when I officially started to like really take on competitors and, and physique athletes. Right. And so um, as you got into the the competing realm, were you working with men and women or mostly just working with with one gender on that front? Men and women, for sure. And um, a lot of men, you know, I, I've, I'd say the majority of my career has been working with men. But, you know, I'll, after I look at like, I think that but then when I really look at the the breakdown of who I've worked with, it's probably like, you know, 60 40 70 30 men women you know i've worked with a i've worked with a lot of women during my time during my career um and, and even in the competing world right like even in the last few years uh you know i i've helped uh a bikini athlete win a pro show we we stepped on the olympia stage um stuff like that which is just like beyond my you know it's just like it's just like how did this how did this how did I get yeah. here? This is really cool. Um, but also like deservingly so. I mean, I'd spent years and years and years, you know, helping competitors get to the stage and and worked up to that point. But um, men and women, for sure. But I think more men historically. I, I, one thing that you know, speaking to the opportunities that have presented themselves, I think that one thing I have admired about you the entire time of our friendship and, and business partnership has been that um, when opportun when opportunities present themselves, you're able to capitalize on those. Like the opportunity of having the competitor who was able to you know, work with her to win the pro show, to get on the Olympia stage and countless other opportunities. And so as you continued from getting started with physique development and um, taking the opportunity to study abroad, uh, you know, if, when we were training together, it was something that was like, uh, hey, I've got this opportunity to study abroad. I'm going to go. It's like next week or like it was it was very soon <laughs> Dude, after you it had was found so out. sudden. Yeah. Yeah. It was so <laughs> sudden. It was like, yep, so, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. And so this is one of the things that I find to be within your coaching so great because you have so much like world experience and just life experience with travel and all those things. And so within your travels, as you went from working uh, from home, all of a sudden now you're on the other side of the, the country type switch or other side of the planet, I suppose, um, and also trying to work with clients. How did you... How did you do that with the the travel, but also managing your one on one clients online? Dude, I don't know. I, I think you have this like romantic idea of what this all is and what coaching is. And, you know, you kind of look at it as a coming from more, I guess, the more of the athletic background. You, you think of it as a as a thing of like you're really just ultimately solving problems. But traditionally, it's like you learn one set of problems and you learn how to solve those problems really, really well as a coach. And you sort of just replicate that and really, really get better at that time and time again over your career. And then, you know, you retire and your career is over and you're, you know, if you did it right, you're at least respected within that area of like, Hey, he was really good at solving problems, um, and working with people. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I think that's how we sort of romanticize it in a way, but, <clears throat> you know, ultimately it's like you, you, when you're in, when you, especially when you're a personal trainer and like, you're not specifically like a, a strength coach for like a university or a specific sport, I have a really hard time telling people no, because it's like, I actually think I can help. And, you know, obviously if it's, if it's in with, within my scope of practice, but I, I a lot of things are with, within your scope of practice as a personal trainer, because 
you know, and this is a big argument, you know, around the industry. And, and I agree to a lot of the argument, the counter arguments to like, there are things we probably shouldn't do, right? Like there's things we absolutely shouldn't do, right? That are out of our scope of practice that a physician should at least do or oversee or whatever. Um, but like, there's a lot we're in charge of and there's a lot that we can really help people with. You know, we're, we're exposed to people more than they're exposed to their, their physician or any other health professional in their life. And so I think that's a powerful role that we play. And I think when someone comes to you, you know, you talk to a lot of people, people come, they learn what you do. They come to you with, with things they're struggling with. And you're like, I actually have a unique perspective you may enjoy. And let's see if this helps. Right. And you help enough people doing that from different walks of life. And you, you sort of just start to gain the skill set and confidence across many different styles of coaching and many different types of people with different types of problems um, of all sort of varying levels across their training career. And <clears throat> I don't know, I, I think that sort of opens you up to the, the ability um, to do certain things like that. But also, I think it kind of goes back to, I think the willing, I don't know where that, I, I would guess the willingness to kind of like show up and rise to the occasion of just being like open to the challenge, I would say mostly comes from sports of like, I was always, whether it's because my brother growing up or like when I got into high school sports, like I was always the youngest kid on the team. And I was always, I was, I was always, I almost always played up a grade or always, almost always played up a grade. Like it's to some extent throughout my life, you know, whether it was starting to play sports with my brother who was two years older, but because I refused, because I was super shy and refused to play my own age. I, I was like, I'm not playing unless I play with my brother. Um, and so I played with my brother, like on his teams. Yeah. Um, and so like I skipped T-ball and went right to pitching machine. Cause like, I was like, I'm not playing with those bozos. I'm playing with <laughs> these guys. Yeah. And so, which knowing me, you're like, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, like that whole time. And then, you know, when you get to high school sports, you know, I, it was like a moment of like, you have that conversation with the, the coaches in the room, the adults in the room, they're like, Hey man, you're going to do this and it's going to be really hard, but you got what it takes and you can rise to the occasion. And there's something that has to be within you to do that, I think, right? To sort of rise to that occasion and, and be interested in, in in that challenge. You know, and I've always been an intellectually, well, not always. I've been a person that is that rises to the occasion, but more recently I've been someone, uh, you know, since I started like university and beyond, um, since I got into my 20s, I'd say I, I've become, rather than those being like, purely athletic or physical pursuits, they become more intellectual. And I think through both, I've gained a lot of confidence in my ability to sort of navigate those problems that people have that they sort of bring to me or us as a team and um, learn, like knowing that the knowledge is out there, you just have to ask the right people or, you know, not allow your ego to take over and think you just know everything. So like, like you do so well, yeah. like you, as soon as you don't know, so like that's something I respect the hell out of you for is like, as soon as you don't know something, you're the first one to be like, who's the best at it? Who can I pay? And like, who's the best at it? What do you charge? I'm going to talk to you and ask you questions. Yeah. You know, and you've done like, that's very admirable. And it's something that I, I don't think en enough people do. And I think that's what's sort of catapulted your coaching career to the heights that it is at right now is because you haven't been scared to like, ask for help, you know, and that I wouldn't say I've always been the best at that. You know, I, I've kind of just, I'll, I'll, I'll do that if I can't find the answer myself. And I'm not saying that you don't look, look for the answer, but like, I feel like you're much quicker to be like, all right, who can I talk to? Yeah. And I'm just like, how much can I read <laughs> and hopefully understand it? <laughs> and then right. if I absolutely cannot, if it's over my head, then I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I give up. Like, who yeah. can I talk to? <laughs> yeah. I would say with that, it, it's one of those things that I like to ask and then kind of learn from the the, the call or, or meeting with that person and then kind of piece together how they got there with the reading afterwards. Because I've got my answer. I understand how it's kind of or how it happened. And then I'm able to kind of pivot, you know, from that point. So uh, for the listeners, it, it, that's a, it can be a helpful way of, of going about things as well as getting, you know, referrals from that person of the best books to, to dig into or research to dig into type situation. Um, coming back to the, the aspect within your clients and, and how you've gone about it with your time away. So prior to, for the individuals who are listening, prior to 
uh, your time abroad, competing was your life. I mean, it was for that period of time you lived, breathed, and slept uh, bodybuilding, and you pivot into an environment that is not that at all. Nor are you with anyone that is is like that. So, what was the? How did things change for you while you were abroad? Slash, uh, coming back. How did you view things from a fitness standpoint differently? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that travel abroad experience, like that was my first time out of the country, right? And and that kind of like speaks to my personality where it's like, oh, you've never done this thing. Oh, you're not going to just do the easiest. Th- you're going to go all the way. Like you've never been out of the country. Oh, there's there's a, a, a there's a trip coming up in three weeks that you applied for and, and got us happened to get a scholarship for for, for some odd reason. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> it's like a week before it starts. And you're like, hey, man, I got it. I'm going. Um and, you know, I, I, especially at that time, like I was towards the tail end of my competing career and there was things that I was sort of running away from, I think when I went there, um, but there was things I was searching for more or less. And I think I was searching to get out of what I was so sucked into for so long, um, or what felt like so long, right? It only been three or four years, but when you're, when you live and breathe it for three or when you live and breathe it for, you know, like four years or whatever it was at that point, it's like, and then that's all you're known for around your area. It's just like, I I just, I I wanted something else and I wanted, I was in search of something else, I think. And I think I was in search of just a new, looking back on it, I think I was just in search for, for new territory to traverse and to be challenged by and, um, to learn from and traveling to different cultures. I, I always kind of say this about traveling is like traveling is this, this like incubator of, of accelerated growth as a person, because you're put into every, everything you've ever thought is, is really challenged ultimately by different cultures. Right. And so during that time I was in, during that like four month period, I was in 12 different countries, um, during that four month period. And so I was, I mean, all across Europe and, uh, Scandinavia and whatever else. And so it's like, you're just kind of, every week you're kind of like put into a new culture to to navigate with one of your friends you know it was just like it was like us two and we're just like well like we're in germany or we're in austria or like we're in hungary you know like budapest or something and it was just like uh, so many of these countries you show up and you're like i don't speak a lick of german i don't speak hungarian i don't speak any of these languages and all the signage is in hungarian or german or whatever and it's just like all right here we go um and there was something about that challenge of just like having to to really talk to people and getting the opportunity to talk to different types of people throughout that time and be surrounded by, you know, during that four month, really intense four months, like I wasn't surrounded by anyone who was even vaguely re- interested in bodybuilding. So, you know, coming in, you're like, this is how my mind, I have a very narrow lens of the the, the world, the health and fitness world, I have a very narrow lens of all these worlds. Um, and everything sort of runs through the filter of like, well, I'm a bodybuilder, so I do things this way. And that's my advice to you is to sort of like try and replicate that because it's helped me. And the more I talk to people and the more I try to help them solve problems, it was like, well, that answer doesn't actually help me that much because I don't care about that. And I don't want to do X, Y, and Z. And I, you know, whatever. And I think when you're forced into that, I was like, I was sort of like my hand was forced in that situation to really adapt and actually zoom way out. Right. Cause I think I was like, I was like on boots on the ground at that point with everything and what I needed to do and what that time did for me is it almost like took me up in the air and gave me a 40,000, 30,000 foot view and being like, Oh, okay. I can start to actually look at this entire equation now with a broader lens and just try to understand it. Right. And I think that since that point, that's what I've been trying to do uh, with myself and with everyone I've ultimately worked with over that time is like tr- kept, tried to keep that 30,000 foot lens open while also trying to kind of sharpen the, sharpen the tools of sort of the boots on the ground approach as well. And trying to hold both viewpoints rather than, than just one, you know, or the other. 
Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. And I think that something that a lot of individuals who are in bodybuilding, who are trying to coach lifestyle clients, they run into the situation where with bodybuilding, it's very black and white. And so then when they're working with lifestyle clients, it puts kind of this unnecessary pressure on that person because that person can have significantly more balance than the person who's in the bodybuilding realm. And so do you feel as though that the time away was kind of the initial jumpstart to you having a better view and on that balance, as well as being able to help your clients find that for them? I think so. And, you know, having a lot of conversations while I was traveling and around people who just weren't at all uh, aware or even interested in the bodybuilding world, right? And the girl, I mean, the woman I ultimately ended up marrying, like when I met her, it's like she met this person who was, you know, successful in this world, but it was very different for me. So like, I think that that opportunity too, that the opportunity to travel and go away and like take myself out of the life I was so accustomed to and comfortable in and, and really, really good at, and everyone sort of kn knew me for that. And then I took myself, removed myself completely from that. I think there's a trend over my career that of doing that, but like completely removing myself from that world and putting myself into a world where no one really knows who I am, nor cares, you know? And, and I think that was really good for me because it was like, you know, you, the way you carry yourself in a world where everyone sort of knows who you are and what you do and how good you are at it versus a world where no one knows who you are, no one cares how good you are at it. And they just want you to be a normal person and like, interact normally with the world and to, with them and like whatever it's like oh so you work out okay i work out too and it's like yeah but it's different and you're like but is it though <laughs> like when you actually start thinking about it you're like that's not that different yeah i choose to do speed to different things but like it's not that different and so I, I think being exposed to that was a real i think it was just uh i don't say eye-opening but it was just like it was refreshing because it was it was something that, again, it sort of forces your hand to to zoom out and be like, who am I without this? You know, and that's why I'd, ultimately I had to I had to figure out it was like, who am I without competing? Who am I outside of bodybuilding? Like, who I, who am I as a person? Who am I as a as a personal trainer? Who am I as like uh, a coach? Who am I as a as as a health and fitness? guy interested in health and fitness like who am i across all of those subjects you know and are all of those all of those areas and i didn't really know the answers to those questions and so i think that was in a big way that was like what first exposed me to having to seek out answers finally to those questions because um i just been so comfortable in the, in the bodybuilding world for you know since i was 19 years old you know it was like okay this is I went from athletics to bodybuilding. So it's like, it's a pretty easy okay. shift, pretty easy shift, especially when you're, I mean, relative to our area, pretty good at both. Right. Um, you know, you drop me in like Texas. I think that's a different story, but, <laughs> you know, in Indiana, I yeah. was okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess what would be the, as you're trying to progress and find more answers for yourself of the direction of, of your identity and those different factors, what were some of the things that led you towards um, creating or, or understanding who you were more? Being open to it. You know, I think that a lot of times we have this closed sense of our identity. Um, you know, and up to that point, when sports kind of got ripped out from under me due to uh, injury, um, you know, I, I, I was sort of having to struggle with my identity at that time, which is when shortly after, um, you know, a couple of years after I had that sort of identity crisis, I got into bodybuilding, which kind of saved that identity a little bit and allowed me to identify with a new version of myself or kind of a, an upgraded past version of myself, what I can say. And again, that became my identity and, and there were strong you know, 
str strong emotions towards that identity and I, I really enjoyed it and I, I thought I was good at it and um other people thought I was good at it which is reassuring you know because you're just like oh okay thanks um which sort of reconfirms that identity but I think being open to when again when that's challenge is like you have to be open to a new identity a new version of yourself at every turn right and like that's what I'm again I, I think for the you know for the people in their 30s and 40s and 50s in the room here uh listening to this it's like yeah that's adulthood you have to continue to like be a new person and be open to that person and whatever else but I've never been 30 or 40 right like I've only been the age I am and I've only been the person I am right and like that's the part of maturing and growing up is being open to new versions of yourself new a new identity of yourself and um understanding that 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 is constantly in flux uh rather than a a set in stone thing and I think that's how you become continue to be a a newer more improved version of yourself is being open to new challenges and, and new opportunities and, and new challenging yourself in new ways which creates a new self-image um and a, a new identity and self-confidence within yourself which directly translates into working with people of different walks of life right where you're they help that i, I think working i don't think i'd be the person i am without working with so many different types of people because at every like every day you're just faced with helping other people and they're giving you you know phone calls from people that you know from all over the world i think that that that's crazy to me that we do that it's like on any, any, any given week we talk to multiple people that we've never met that are, are scattered around the world and they they want to get on the phone and they want to work with you and they're just like here's what i'm dealing with can you help me with this or like what's your advice and it's just like every one of those conversations challenges you in a new way and forces you to constantly rethink what you think and constantly re reevaluate what you understand and what you can perspectives that you can teach on that of which you understand and without i think without the clients i've worked with you know i'd I don't think I'd be the same me at this point, right? And I, that's an obvious thing once I kind of comes out of your mouth. But right. like going to a job where you under like if I went to a job that I I always knew it was going to happen, I worked with the same people day in and day out. I understand how you sort of like get into you know you you sort of like get on these train tracks that only go in one direction, and you don't really veer off in either direction, right? But I feel like, you know, with the career path that we've chosen and coaching and personal training and working with so many different people across different cultures, it's like in different areas, pockets of the United States, even it's like, or pockets of North America, let's say, you're not on a train track anymore. Like you're on this free flowing hike that could go anywhere, you know, and you're just like, oh, this is a new, the trail kind of starts to fork and you're like, oh, I'll just take a right, you know, I'll just veer off in this direction for a little bit see where this takes me um but always kind of knowing that the trail that you were supposed to be on is leading towards one direction right you know you're like you're you need to go west but you're like well i'll go northwest for a while and then i'll kind of go southwest for a while i may go back east for a bit kind of digress and and see what's back there if i missed anything and kind of go continue back on the journey towards the west and you know i, I think th this career path has allowed us to be that those type of people and i think that's really helped me mature as a person and become a better person and a better trainer definitely over the years yeah i, I would say that the the impact that we are able to put into others lives it's oftentimes reciprocated with what they are able to put into our lives just in a different way um and i find that to be very powerful uh, coming back to the uh you studied abroad, you met the love of your life, has been such a, a beautiful impact on you as a person, but also has been a, a great impact on you from a, a coaching standpoint for you as well. Because as you came back from studying abroad, um, and I'm, I'm cutting out a couple of other travels and those things, but uh, as you came back, it was it was something where now now Cassandra's getting introduced to you as the bodybuilder, as you talked about where yeah. she had not really known that version of you because she got to know the specific version of you studying abroad. And so now you're introducing her into a, a contest prep, not far after you guys get back, uh, maybe like a year and a half, you get into it, maybe not even that long. I think I got right into it. Um, 
in a way, like I came back and I, I looked at old photos not too long ago. Um, but when I returned back and, you know, I, I almost got right into it with the intention of like, I think I want to do one more. And I wanted, you know, I've told this in other podcast episodes um, before, but, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, I met this woman who at a time in my life when I needed, I wasn't looking, but I needed. And that's ultimately when you find things that you ultimately need is when you're not looking for them, right? And I think that's, you know, like happiness or fulfillment. It's kind of just like you stumble upon it as you do your life. Um, but, you know, I, I met this this amazing person at this time. I wasn't, I was sort of running away from the life I had created for myself that I was like, all right, I'm kind of, I want to bail on this. I don't know how to get out of it. So I'm just going to bail. <laughs> um, not fully bail on everyone, but like a certain parts of it, number of people. It was just like parts of that life I just wanted to bail from and I didn't know how. So this seemed like a sort of productive way to do it um, and to experience the world in a, in a unique way and that I'd never had before, you know, and I, I was exposed to this person um, a new, new versions of myself and were exposed to me. And I, I was becoming this person that I was really interested in becoming. And, you know, like when you travel to a new place, it's like you can sort of be the person you've wanted to be for a while. But in your old life, you really couldn't be that person fully. Um, not because of, you know, just because of certain people in your life at that time that just didn't allow you to be that person or, or your own views on on that or whatever. Um, or you weren't allowing yourself to be that person because of certain criteria or whatever. And so when I when I traveled and, and met, you know, met these people, met my now wife Cassandra is like I'm allowed to be this person you know and she challenged me to be a new person a better version of myself that I ultimately was really challenged on right because like all my views were coming from this very myopic lens of of bodybuilding and physique and like always putting my physical self first and and you know I I rarely put my mental self the the mental and emotional self part of myself first and I was I was just sort of like a I was just in it you know, I was just like, how can I be physic my physical best at every turn? And like, that was my pursuit and everything revolved around that. But I, you know, when I traveled and went, you know, went away, like that, that was taken. That was sort of dismantled, not taken, but dismantled into its individual components and sort of having it had to be re put back together like a puzzle in a way. Um, and I had Cassandra there and, and some friends there to help um, along the way. And um that was that was really crucial for me to to go away and and to experience that i guess yeah i, I, don't, I think i don't that, remember the actual question <laughs> no it's okay <laughs> no i think that that was it's it's good because people are getting a look into to you as the individual and kind of what's uh been pivotal pieces to to form where you're at today and i think that that's uh as helpful as if you were to answer the you know the question that I had posed, or if you were to go into it as as you did, I think that um, as you came back and were trying to integrate that new aspect of yourself, um, and and more so, I, I shouldn't even call it new aspect, but new self discovery for you, and then trying to integrate that version with the. Uh, pieces that you wanted to keep when you got back home and trying to find the middle ground of, of how you enjoy those things. I think that that played a role within your time uh, with with your um, with your clients and those different factors and, and how you worked with them individually. And so you went in and did you compete one time or two times after you had come back twice? Once. Once. That was okay. my last two raw. That's, That's right. I, I did my I did my first pro show Remember that was the Dallas Europa 2015. Mm -hmm. That would have been months before I would have left. I yeah, because I did it in 2015. I went away in 2015. Yeah. So I did that first. I did my first pro show. I was like 22 at the time, I think. And you know, it wasn't you know three or four months later. Went went away, mm -hmm. you know, and. Yeah, I guess back to your <laughs> the last question. I do remember it now. Um, yeah, I wanted I wanted her. So like dur during that time, right, of what I was explaining before of like 
the the person I was was sort of dismantled into its, or or, or uh, yeah, dismantled in, into its individual components, sort of like a jigsaw puzzle, and having to be put back together in, in a different way that best fit the the person I wanted to be, rather than the person that I was when I left. And within that, though, I still wanted, I still wanted her to see who I was who I was really good at being like, I, I wanted to almost like prove it to myself and show her of like, Hey, I know you've never met this version of me. And I know you've only like heard that I was good at this. I want to show you, I'm really good at this. Like that was important to me to like have her experience that part. Cause it was also such a big part of who I was and who made me who I was up to that point. And so I, I felt a part of me was missing if I didn't, take her through that with me because I it's sort of like I would have been leaving something on the table and I think I would have I would have always come back to like well I wish you would have seen me do it right you know and and I didn't want that I guess and I I'm glad I went through with it and I wanted her to experience the whole thing with me and it ended up being the most well-rounded prep I've ever had I mean I was the healthiest I'd ever been. I looked the best I'd ever looked. Um, I was fulfilled. I was happy. I was also ready for it to be done. But I, I think that was that was the closure I was looking for. I think during that during that time, and and that gave me closure, you know. And I I went out with I went out the best I'd ever looked, the best I've ever felt, and I was really really happy about that. And so it was really really important for me for her to see what made me who I am today. And it, I did, you know, and it was a really proud moment for me. And then as soon as I remember, as soon as I walked off stage, it was just like, all right, that's it. Let's go eat. I'm yeah. done. And it was just like, I don't care anymore. Like this is, that was really good. I don't, I'm done. Yeah. You know, it was just like very obvious at the time. For, yeah, from my point of view at that time, it was something where you were one of the most competitive people I know. And it was a, a transition of like, how can I still like knowing that competing was on the the last or, or final chapter for you? How can I still apply my competitive sense into other aspects of my life? And I think that you had to close that chapter before those things presented themselves. And so from your, your competitive nature, what have you found past competing that you've been able to like satisfy that hunger for competitiveness. I started playing golf. I suck at that. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I think I really, I really dove into the deep end of, I think uh, of, right. And, and I think it's important. Like I am, I'm externally competitive in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But I'm extremely internal or inter internally com very competitive, internally right? competitive. Yes. So I think that's an important distinction to make because, like, when I transitioned into to, into the new thing, I got closure on the old thing. Transitioned into the new thing. I I just wanted. I, I was searching again for something, and I, I think I I dove headfirst into like the intellectual part of myself, the academic part of myself. And trying to just become the best well-rounded trainer I could, coach I could, professional ultimately. Like not even identifying with trainer or coach, just a professional in the working world. I wanted to contribute positively to what I was doing. And, you know, if every pursuit in my life is how can I be the best version of what I'm trying to be right now? And when competing was over, that was a that was sort of a, a part of me that I'd always sort of used as a crutch of like, well, I can always, I can always be better at this version of myself. And this is, this is a noble pursuit. You know, it's a, it's a productive pursuit in my life up to this point. And so I could, could just, I could continue on that path and keep diving into that. Or I could close this chapter and, and enter a new one where again, I'm to me, I'm in, sort of faced with a newer challenge that I was a little uncomfortable with. And having to show up in a, in a new way and be sort of st start that pursuit of like, how do I become the best version of this thing that I can be? Um, and I think that's kind of what started that and the internal 
competitiveness in me to, you know, different opportunities have popped up, right? I've been able to work with some really cool people that was really, really big challenge. And um, as a, as a work, you know, like a professional trainer, but also, you know, like the book, for example, was a really big internal competition for me, you know, you know, cause I didn't even like tell anyone I told like a couple people, right? Like right. you, my wife, like yeah. my parents, like I told like a few people that I was going to write a, I was in the process of writing a book, but I remember like, I didn't actually tell it anyone publicly until the book was finished that I was like, Hey, I wrote this. Yeah. It comes out next week. You know? <laughs> um, and that was a big internal comp. Like those are like the internal things I've been, been pursuing. But I think ultimately like how to, how do I be the best ver version of what I'm trying to be right now? And right now that's, how do I be the best professional that I can be best business partner, um, colleague, friend, husband, son, brother, you name it. And I don't think I was those, always those things in the previous chapter. And I think I felt that deeply and I wanted to sort of resurrect that and be better at that moving forward. And so I think closing that chapter helped me give space to pursuing that now. And I think that this is, this is the end of one of the individuals that you work so well with. And, um, and, and what I'm getting to with that is the individual and, and I resonate with this so abundantly of having such a competitive sense, whether it be internal or external. And you get to this point in adulthood where, uh, there's not a whole lot of things to necessarily be competitive with, or especially from a physical pursuit. And so one thing that you really do a good job of with your clients is that person who's struggling with that, helping them identify different factors, whether that be within their training or their nutrition that they can be internally competitive with to really satisfy that hunger. And it, it does help a ton from a, a disciplinary aspect as well as just um, fulfillment, I, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I <laughs> I do really work. I, I love working with those those people. And, you know, it, it's, you know, I, like I, we were talking about this before we hopped on is like, and we've had this conversation so many times. It's like, I'm a recovering bodybuilder that consistently relapses, you know, all, you know, I, I consistently relapse on what that mindset, very narrow myopic mindset was, you know, and I've gotten better and better and better over the years and learning how to, you know, like when you're a bodybuilder and when you are a physique athlete, you or an athlete of any kind, really, you have such an extreme view of what that thing is, right? And you almost have to, you have to be an extreme person and sacrifice things that you, uh, norm, you know, like if that was removed from your life, you otherwise would never think twice about, but this is in your life and this is who you are and this is, is what you do and this is what you're trying to be your best at. And because of that, you have to make very competitive sacrifices internally and externally um, to be the best, version of that that you're trying to be but right when you're a bodybuilder physique athlete or athlete in general that's what you do and when that's sort of when that competitiveness is taken away you know and that part of your identity is removed it's hard to <laughs> when it's not there and you have to sort of create it out of thin air it's pretty tough right because it's like the you know, going from team sports all throughout my life into the individual sport of, of competitive bodybuilding, there was always something for me to show up for. It was very obvious. Like it was always there. It was like, okay, this is the thing I need to, what do I need to do to be the best at this that I can be? And when those things are all removed and you're sort of just like plopped into adulthood as like this normal everyday person now who doesn't really have a competitive thing they're, they're pursuing or that's always sort of put in front of them. It's like, okay, how do I create that out of thin air now? You know, it feels like at times you're sort of grasping at straws. And so that's, that's a version of myself that I've, I've pursued. And that's, that's a type of client that I've, I've really helped and enjoyed working with over the years is this recovering uh, athlete or this, this athlete within people, this competitive person within this competitiveness within people that they've always expressed, you know, maybe from a young age. And that was, that was removed from their life and they're sort of like well that's how i always was that's how i always express this part of myself and when that's taken away it's like i'm still able to do the rest of my life i do this you know and but i i lost that self-expression in the competitive part of myself which can be really tough for people you know and so 
I've really enjoyed working with people that are trying to rekindle that and search for that. Um, and, and that's been something like ex-athletes, ex-competitors, people who are, are trying to, to re reestablish that, that within them and gain fulfillment again from that competitive challenge. So yeah, that's something that I've, I've enjoyed over the years for myself and working with others. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and learning a lot, I absolutely love to hear it, but maybe you feel like you can't apply it perfectly. No worries. We got an app for that. Go ahead and check the show notes or the description box, and there will be a link to go and check out the Physique Development Training Club. This is an app that is going to give you exactly what you need to progress within training with three, four, and five day splits, as well as home and gym options, complete with a timer in there, videos to the training and everything else you need to be successful. So I can't wait to hear how much you love it. And, and one thing that you've you know, spent time creating that competitive nature with was your your education and the just writing the book and so many other things, pr- pursuits within your education as a whole and uh, seeking out just continuing to improve from a coaching standpoint. This has led you to a position where you have the ability to work with almost anyone. Uh, you can, any situation that comes to you, it's one of those things where it's like, if I don't have the immediate answer, I know that I have the resources, whether it be people or or literature that I can lean into and be able to get the answer for. And so you find yourself in this situation where when you can work with everyone, it's difficult to um, you know, kind of uh, niche down or, or, or work with a specific type of person. And so what are some of the hurdles that have presented itself because you are so well-versed um, that have presented itself as in terms of seeking that client or connecting with a, a client specifically? Well, I think it's the language, right? So like such a big marketing tool and the way that you reach people is social media, right? And that's been that's been true from the beginning of our professional careers, right? We were blessed with the opportunity of social media you know, from the very beginning. And that's how we've always been able to identify and like connect with other people across the screen and get them bought into what we're doing and um, get them interested and curious about working with us and, and connecting with us and learning from us and whatever else. And when I'd say the biggest challenge of like working with such a broad spectrum of people is it's exposed me to so so many different types of problems. Um that which is phenomenal but it's created a very general approach uh, and a very general way of speaking about things where i think at times it's hard for any one group to identify with maybe how i'm presenting something and i I think i've over the past few years i've just found myself in the middle of different like i'm not once i'm not one of anything and so I think it's actually been harder for me as a coach and and someone who's trying to like, you know, always try to seek out new, new people and whatever else. It's like, I, there's not really a lane I consistently go down, you know, and it's hard for people to be like, oh, okay, well, I remember he had a, he had a post, you know, a few months back that I really hit home for me, but then he kind of switched gears, you know, and he, he hasn't come back to that, you know, in a few months. And and then a few months later, he's like, oh, he, dude, he hit home with that again for me. And maybe that's when you reach out, but maybe it isn't, you know, maybe you go somewhere else because they, they talk to you more as an individual and kind of what you're struggling with. And I think that lack of, you know, and I, I don't necessarily believe that you have to always like niche down to the most specific person of, of, or version of the person you want to, you want to work with. But I, I think it does help to have a and kind of what i've been searching for and coming to to terms with over the past few years is trying to to nail down that at which who i'm even trying to to ultimately speak to which is trying to speak to everybody but if you try to speak to you know it's like trying to trying to help everyone you end up helping no one you know and not necessarily but within our field it's like and how you market yourself as a as a you know professional trainer it's like you know, I work with a lot of people, you know, I don't know, like, what's your issue? You know, and it's like, that doesn't always, that doesn't always resonate with everyone uh, in that way. So I think I've just been trying to find my voice because it was so specific. Exactly. And then it got super general, sort of nihilistic, you know, and it was like, it was sort of like removing myself. And I'm like, wait, I don't want to, remo- I don't, 
I don't want to, what am I doing? Like, I don't want to do that. Like, and then I've just tried to, I've traversed that over the past few years of like trying to even figure out what I'm trying to, to put forward, you know? And, and right now I, it is a message of, it's a message. I, I don't know, man. It's a message for me. It's like helping people, meeting people where they're actually at and, and helping them find the, that competitive sense of what they're trying to accomplish physically and mentally and emotionally um, from a health and fitness standpoint. Um, but, but also matching that with like where they're at, but also what they enjoy, you know? And, and I think that's, that challenges them and puts them in a situation where they're like, oh, I'm back home, baby. Here we go. Home court advantage. I'm in it, you know? And I, I think I, I've connected with a lot of, of people recently, clients that I've been working with over the past 12 months that, you know, we've gotten some great, great results. And, and if they haven't been like crazy out of this world, physical transformations, they're, they're crazy mental and emotional transformations of the way that people attack their, their, their training and attack their, the challenge of, of staying competitive physically and, you know, whatever that is for them, you know, and, and that's been, it's been a fun thing to explore. And I, I think I'm getting closer to, to figuring that out from a language perspective, but yeah. And I think that when you're, when you're seeking to connect with clients, it has to be very specific to them because it's a, a vulnerable, it's a vulnerable time to even ask for help, um, within something within your own health and those different factors. And so for someone to reach out, it really needs to connect with them and, and be good reason. Um, because when you're really talking to competitors, for example, it's really just a matter of, can you get me to the place that I need to go? Can you get me into the best shape possible? Can I get a first place trophy? Can I earn my pro card? When you're talking to competitors, that's really all that matters. So results is the main and really only driver for most. Um, but when you're looking at it from a lifestyle standpoint, it's a it's a different ball game. And so the, the transition of talking to clients, um, um, and, and I've found this for myself, and I know that this has been a, a point for you of, of it not being solely results driven, it being more of that connection piece and you trying to find those connection pieces you know, for you and, and um, with the individual who's seeking to really nourish that competitiveness. I think that's a, a, a huge one um, for those who are, are listening. This is a, an individual who's going to be able to really walk you through and, and meet you where you're at, um, of, of where you're at within your journey and be able to catapult you forward with, with, with whatever direction you need to go to be able to, to manage things from a, a travel standpoint or being able to manage things just from a, a work-life balance perspective and, and giving you a, a look at things that it doesn't have to be so black and white. I, I believe that Austin is, is one that has been able to find a really nice gray area. And he will be the first one to tell you that that gray area can turn more black or more white at different times, depending on if you overshot or undershot, whatever that balance may be. But it's something that if you're seeking to really find that, I, I assure you that he is going to be your number one answer to really finding that for you because he's been in the trenches. I think that that's one of the biggest things with finding balances, being in the trenches and trying to figure that out. Um, and I mean, he's done that within different, uh, different countries, countries with different languages, um, and being able to, to pinpoint those things. So, um, I, I think that that's very, very important for you. And within the, the, the athletic realm of things, you, you're someone who has such an intensity and love for, for training in general. Um, do you find that to be something that is common amongst the, the clients that you're working with, um, that are on your, your roster at the moment? A lot of them. Yeah. And I, I think, a lot of them, <laughs> you know, we're in a very results driven world. Right. And I, I think that that's important, right? Because you're, you're, at the end of the day, you're paying for, you're paying for something and you're, you're, ex you're exchanging your, your own efforts to earn money, to pay for this thing, for someone to help you, uh, towards that, that result you're searching for. And, and again, so like results driven is what we do and, and what we are. Um, but I think more specifically results driven with the health health centric focus and health is very multifaceted health is is very broad and health means different things to different people for different reasons and you know like recently uh i worked with uh i worked with my uncle who i he he did i mean he crushed it man like but we we, we he's down 30 pounds um he, so he's an ex ex baseball player 
was a phenomenal athlete. Um, and there's that competitive nature in him. There's that, that part of him who, who shows up and has always showed up. Um, but it hasn't always been for himself. And so this was, this was getting him back to that place where he's, he's showing up for himself again, um, in, in a competitive way. And he's bringing that intensity to his own life and his own health, um, for himself, not for others, which I think is a, a tough thing to do a lot of times. Um, you know, I know, especially if you, if you have a family, like if you have people to provide for and, and things to, to do that, um, it's very easy for your own health and your own, uh, pursuits to take a back seat. And so it was really a time where he was in a position. It was like, Hey, let's, let's go back. Let's go inward. Let's, let's return back to that and, and connect with that competitive side of ourselves, which I know you have. And let's use that as our driving force uh, for the intensity at which we need to to pursue this thing, right? And then find the balance of that intensity, you know, because there's there's a level of intensity you can you need to bring to to get you to where you want to go. But there's also enough. I'm here to help you with that balance of like, all right, yes, I've been there. Trust me, I get it. But like, we got to pull that lever back a little bit, man, because. This is going to do X, Y, and Z if you're not careful. Trust me. Um, and sometimes people need to dip their toes in that water and experience it for themselves. And I'm here to help you through that. But sometimes I can, I think sometimes I can help people stay away and steer clear from ever hitting that far extreme at which you're like, whoa, I went way too far. <laughs> um, you know, and and so yeah, man, down like this is just one example, but like down 30 pounds. Uh, it was an ex-athlete, down 30 pounds. Uh, we're getting off you know, medications, uh, you know, cholesterol medication, blood pressure medication. Um, you know, we're, we're really moving a lot of metrics, you know, obviously physically looks physically transformed, like looks, you know, looks great. Lost 30 pounds, uh, but in completely like rec recomped. But what I was more focused on and what I was the most happy about and proud of was his blood pressure, was his cholesterol, was uh, his actual health and his mindset around his health and his mindset around showing up and doing the things that he needed to do for himself to be the best version of him that he could be for for his family and others right and i you're always the you're always going to be the limiting factor within your own story within your own life within your own business within your own health like you're you're always the limiting factor you're always the bottleneck right and you have a decision to make Right. If you want to show up for others, you want to show up for who you need to show up for in your life. You also have to show up for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think helping people find that again for themselves is something that I've really, really enjoyed. And that's just one example I we've I've recently helped him do, and I uh, you know he helped me realize a lot of things around around that as well. And um, it, it's just been a very beneficial relationship that I I've been able to to have with clients. You know, and again, kind of going back, like, I you know I like to think the clients that I've worked with, I've, I've touched, I, I've, I've been in their lives in a, in a positive way where I've helped them become, you know, realize who they can be and who they want to be um, and, and how to actually make that happen and make that a reality and, and live that in their everyday life. But that's also reciprocated, you know, and that's been life changing for me over the years. And for your uncle, uh, from a, just painting a full picture here, he's got a pretty, if, I, if I'm if i remembering or, or know specifically who he is, a very stressful job, multiple kids, um, got a lot of stuff going on, and you more so were able to really help him find where that competitive nature and being able to integrate the nutrition and training within all the things that he had going on. Yeah, man, and, and like traveling to, to see... Um like traveling to see like his daughter plays, I think it's a, uh, you'll, you'll know who it is. His daughter plays, uh, you know, collegiate softball, um, for UK. And so very, I mean, just a stud. Yeah. Just plays softball for UK. Just a stud. Oh my God. And <laughs> so they're traveling, um, you know, starting shortstop for UK as a freshman. I mean, get out. So of cool. Yeah. Um, so, Anyways, traveling all over God's green earth to watch her play softball, right? And um, there's a lot of challenges that come up. Like you're trying to to be 
the healthiest version of yourself. But when your life is filled with pounding miles on pavement to get to the next game every, every week, it's really hard to navigate, right? It's really hard to create a framework of, of how to make decisions and how to, how to make the best decision for you, how to show up for yourself in those moments. Um, right. And, and, and learning about every decision we make and how it impacts our ultimate goal down the line, right. And when to, when to make the tough decision and when, when to make it the decision consciously of, no, I'm, this is conscious and this is intentional. And I'm here to, I'm here to enjoy this because, you know, that may, that may in and of itself sound extreme, but you know, if those moments were rare in our lives, I think that would be extreme. But unfortunately, fortunately, and unfortunately, fortunately for society, it's not rare, but unfortunately for us, it's not rare, you know, because you're constantly presented with just this every moment, like every meal can be this decadent last meal. And if we, like, that's hard to, that's hard to navigate. Like, especially if you don't have a, a really good foundation of nutrition, you know, and, in, in understanding what impacts different parts of our health and, and fitness and body composition and the way that we feel and, and the way that we walk throughout our life, our energy levels and the way we perform and all of those things, um, even cognitively for our jobs and our, our, our professional pursuits, like when there are those constant things in your life where it's like every meal can be this decadent tasteful like life-changing just like oh that was so good it was also four thousand calories at one meal it's like no like you're not those are hard urges those are hard things to navigate but they're there like that's reality like every day we're in a situation where we have to like we're no longer seeking it out and searching for these foods to fulfill that void. Like they're just there, whether that's a five minute drive or it's in my pantry, that hunt is very short and I know exactly where to go get it. You know, it's like, it's not hard. Um, it's not hard physically. It's not hard mentally. Um, and the hardest parts physically and mentally are actually to fight against those very natural urges to, to indulge and to, to not create constraints in our lives that will ultimately help us, you know, physically transform and be healthier and live longer, have more energy, be more physically mobile as we age and all of those things that I, as I'm, I'm, I'm getting older, right? Like we're all getting older and you, you're, you're that youthful ignorance that you can have around all of these things starts to sort of wane and go away as you experience your own things right where you don't always constrain create constraints you know you're like oh no I, i've always gotten away with that i'm fine yeah. and then six months later you look up and you're like not so much i'm not getting away with this <laughs> you know it's like you know you, you know you, you catch a glimpse and you're like oof uh okay this is different how, do, how did this happen you know and you're like you know exactly how it happened but unless you're consciously aware of it uh, and you know how to navigate it and you're, you're going in every day with, with some sort of rough game plan. Um, it, 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 it can be really tough. Yeah. Um, and so I think going, understanding that there's a game plan to be, to be created. Um, and not all game plans have to be super restrictive. Um, but they need to be intentional. Like you have to navigate that world intentionally these days, um, with how much we have around us that you know, ultimately gets us away from who we know we need to be, right? Paying attention to what we eat nutritionally, calorically, um, how how we're actually paying attention to our stress and our sleep, our movement every day, the the intensity we bring to our physical pursuits, right? Because also th those are all things that at one time were very, very natural and just came about in our lives, whether that was like our ancestors or that was like us as children or us as teenagers or us as young adults. But as you age and as you become older, those things are those things are removed. And it's unless you intentionally seek them back out in some way, shape, or form, you know, and, and in the easiest way for us as ex-athletes, as ex-competitors, it's like, well, how can I I don't want to completely throw away everything I've learned, everything I've that's made me who I am and has got me to this point. Like I don't need to do it to the same extreme, but 
how can I take all of those components individually and, and sort of reframe them in a way that that keeps me sharp, it keeps me who I want to be, and it keeps me showing up physically, mentally, emotionally uh, as the person I want to be. And, and helping clients get through that too is, has been really fun. Yeah, I think that as you're transferring from or transitioning from being a competitor, you're kind of taking the knowledge that you've had and changing it from just an on and off light switch and moving it more to a, a dial of of dimmer or brighter and being able to see, oh, I can still use this tool. It's just not to the same strength as what it once was type situation. And the the aspect of being able to say no to those decadent meals, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I think comes from the ability to have a strong enough why not. And that's what many people run into is not having a reason as to why they can't have it. They just, you know, they immediately think, well, this is too many calories or this is too dense of a meal. I can't have it. It's like, well, not necessarily. It's like, can you have this? But then it means that you may not be able to have it in the evening and having a strong enough why not and, and being able to be taught those things is very valuable. And so I think that one thing that you do such a great job of is providing that why not or, or why to the scenarios of things that you should or, or shouldn't do um, throughout your your coaching as a whole. So within the the teaching aspect of your coaching, um, what are some of the things that you feel within your clients that you're teaching the most on? I think it's kind of rules and in, in creating constraints, um, healthy constraints in your life, right? Because we are, I mean, our life right now is filled with every imaginable urge that is at our fingertips at every moment, right? Whether that's wasting your entire day scrolling TikTok or, you know, whatever that, that is, or, or going into your pantry and, and every day turns into a 10,000 calorie challenge. And it's like, or you use the time that you had to go to the gym to watch something on Netflix or YouTube or scroll or do whatever. When before those things were presented, it was like, oh, there's no question. I have an hour here. This is when I go. And now it's like, oh, well, I kind of took 30 minutes of that to, to, to watch a YouTube video. I took 30 minutes to scroll and now that time window has gone. And now that that's turned into two days of doing that, three days of doing that. Um, and so I, I think creating a healthy constraint model for, for every individual is, is really important. It's something that I've really started to pursue, you know, and, and coming up with these healthy constraints of like, you know, um, you know, like a don't miss twice rule or, you know, like the like the rule of three or um, anything like that. Like, like don't miss twice is like, you know, I, I have a philosophy for myself is like, don't miss twice when it's don't miss two workouts in a row. I don't care. And it's not like, you know, when I was, you know, when I was competing, it was like, or when I was working with competitors, it's like, no, we're doing a five, two on five, on, five on two off split. We're doing X, Y, and Z. This is going to get us to our show. But now it's like, I don't, it's not the same relationship I have with it you know, even for myself or for clients that I work with. And so we're really kind of, I, I'm working with a lot of people and I work with a lot of people who have had that in their life previously and are essentially coming from a place where they had never had to intentionally pursue these things because they were always naturally there. But as you age and as you sort of get into life, the messiness of life, you you find yourself in these new territories where you're not naturally gravitating towards the thing you always did anymore, which creates its own challenges, right? And you have to start to ask, ask yourself why, ask yourself, well, how do, I, how do I get that back into my life in a healthy way without going to the extreme, right? And so like a don't miss twice rule is like, I don't miss two workouts in a row. Um, and like, you know, I made a post on this yesterday. If it's planned, make it happen. If it's not, don't sweat it. You know, but it's kind of like creating these these mental frameworks around these things or, or like when you go out to eat, right? Like we, like if you go out to eat for a meal, that's okay, we're, we're working towards this goal. We're, we're working to introduce more whole foods, better meal portions, have constraints around calories, uh, constraints around what we're doing with our macronutrients every day, our exercise, our fitness, all those things. You know, like when you go out to eat, how do we create healthy constraints around what you're ordering? And, and you know, okay, you can either, you know, like the rule, it's like you can, you can have an alcoholic beverage, a dessert or an appetizer, but you can't have all three. You know, I think, uh, I think our buddy Matt actually posted about this the other day. And I, um, I, I've used that as well. And in, in, in my coaching over the past year, it's like, it's, 
you know, I, I don't necessarily want you to always have to think about the calories of the meal when you go out, but I want you to have to constrain yourself to some degree because I think constraints are healthy, right? It's like, I enjoy, I enjoy having goals because they create constraints. I enjoy being in a relationship because it, it creates constraints. I like being in these, these situations because it, it creates constraints in my life, right? I like, I like having to be accountable to colleagues and, and business partners because it helps me create constraints and order within the chaos of life. And if we don't create healthy constraints within the chaos, then we're just left with chaos, right? There's, there's little order. And I, for myself, it's like, if there's little order, I feel chaotic, whether it's externally or internally, I just feel like I don't have much control. Right. And when I start to lose control, I get sort of internally freaked out and have a little crisis, right? Um, internal crisis, uh, which sometimes manifests as an external crisis. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's something that I, I think a lot of people struggle with. And a lot of people that I've worked with over the past, you know, two or three years have, have struggled with as well. And it's been something really that's been really a challenge to me to, to, to see where that is in my own life. But then how, how can I take what's going on in my own life and turn that into a, a net positive of a teaching moment for others? Um, you know, and I, I think that's in terms of like the voice and, and how I kind of put that knowledge forward. I think that's what I'm trying to do more and more now is I think it's what I did really good back in the day when I was very clear um, with like who I was speaking to and what I was speaking about. But as that's gotten more vague over the years and more generalized, I've sort of, I guess, lost touch with not with like who I'm coaching and why I'm coaching them or how I coach them. I think that's got that's gotten sharp and improved, but how I speak about it publicly on social as a marketing tool, it's become very vague, <laughs> you know? Um, like, it's very funny. Like I noticed myself even like yesterday or su Saturday or Sunday, I was doing so many things, like talking about so many things with clients and, and like recording voice memos and videos and like helping people through these very specific things. And then I sat down to like, create a post and write a post to, to go up on Monday. And I was like, I don't have anything. What am I talking about? Like, I don't have anything to, you know, it's like it, for some reason there's just been this disconnect where and now it's hard for me to like take what I actually do and practice with clients into how I want to speak about it publicly and, and help other people with that may not be, you know, working with me directly. And so I'm trying to get back to that, like, oh, this is a good teaching moment that happened in my own life or that with a client and let's just yeah. use that, you know, and that's been, for some reason it's, it's been hard yeah. <laughs> for me. From a, from a content standpoint, I, I know that I fall into this where, um, you don't want to repeat yourself. And so you're like, you know, I've been, I've been in this coaching thing for eight years and I've been doing check-ins many days of the week, uh, for a long time now. And it's like, I'm repeating something that I've said, but, uh, I think that we often forget that more often it's not something or you're not learning something new. It's more so just being reminded of something that you already know that is the most helpful for us. And so that's, I think, one of the more challenging things from a content creation standpoint, because you're trying to be, uh, you know, provide something that's kind of new or, or nuanced for someone that's like, oh, yes, I, I need this information. Like they're, they're dying for it type situation. But in reality, it could just be a matter of like, hey, you should get your steps in today. Like, remember to take your creatine, remember to drink your water, like do the simple stuff. And I think that that's one of the, the more helpful things that I always have to go back to from a content creation standpoint. Well, um, this wraps up Alex Bush's first interview. <laughs> I think you did a pretty good job. Thank you. It's, Thank it's, you. Interviewing's tough, man. Yeah. It's 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 good to start with someone you've known for a long time and you know very <laughs> intimately. Um, but I think you did a great job. Thank you. Uh, and and to that last point, just really quick, as a finisher, to that last point, I, I had it pop up. So it's less about it's less about learning new things, and it's more about executing on the things that you know you should be doing, right? And because when we work with clients, right? We have conversations with them consistently and it's like, what do you think you should do? What do you think a, a good way to approach that is? And I would say out of like five things that they mentioned, four are on point, right? And if they do those four things really well, they'll actually get where they wanna go. So it's not a matter of they don't know, they do know. They know generally where they need to do, what they need to do and where they need to go and how they need to get there. But I think a big part is, as a coach and as a trainer, your job is to help them fill in those knowledge gaps of 
you may be past things that they're holding on to that aren't necessarily true or are negatively impacting the way that they approach it and really just kind of helping them pursue the thing that they're actually trying to get um, with consistency and accountability. Because again, like we all know, it's like, oh, I want to do X, Y, and Z. It's like, oh, well, you know how to do that, right? And it's like, yeah, generally. It's like, yeah, then all right, do it. And like, that's the, that's the hardest part, the do it part. Because then you're left with like, yeah, but like how, God, like I know how to do it today, but like, how do I do it tomorrow? Right. And how do I do it the next day? Right. You know, and that that's, I think that's in a big way what we help with um, because I think a big part of our job is helping people get out of their own way. And throughout that process of getting out of your own way, we try to help you to, to figure out and, and teach you how to consistently do that for the rest of your life and how to, how to understand the ebbs and flows of what's going to happen because it's really, you know, a 12 week transformation sticking to something for three months, you know, with intensity is challenging, but it's not hard, but understanding and learning the principles of what got you there in three months and extending those out and understanding that there's going to be urges and ebbs and flows and periods of your life where that's going to lapse if you're not careful. And if you're not intentional with this, if you're not consistent with, you know, if you're not consistent with movements, if you're not consistent with whole foods throughout the day, if you're not consistent with water, all these general things, right? It's like life sneaks up on you. And before you know it, you gain, you gain 10, 15, 20 pounds. And you're like, where did that come from? Right. And if you're not careful, and if you don't continue to pursue that, that kind of happens year after year. And it's like, now I'm in deep shit. And now I got to crawl out of a big hole. That's not impossible by any stretch, but it's certainly a lot harder because I, I wasn't able to be consistent and stay accountable to those things that I know to be valuable towards that pursuit. Um, and it's an easy world to get caught up in if you're not careful. But yeah, I mean, I think you, uh, I think you did a great job at the Thank interview. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. If you Any guys are wanting, remarks? If, you, if you've made it this far within the podcast, um, let us know in the, I guess, if you're watching on YouTube, let us know in the comments or shoot us a DM on, on Instagram uh, if you want more of the, the Alex interviews here, because I'll, I'll do these, I'll do them all the time. I'll get better and better. Um, Alex interview series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope you guys, or we hope you guys have a beautiful day and we'll see you in the next episode.